Hello friends, thanks for joining me today. Today we will talk about MySQL installation. So basically we are planning to make video on Spring Data JPA. But to implement a Spring Data JPA, you need some database, correct? So if you have seen my videos, then in most of those videos, I have used H2 database, which is something like in-memory or file-based database, which by default a Spring is going to provide you, a Spring Boot is going to provide you. But uh, for project implementation, let's say you are going to implement your own project, then you will not go for H2 database. You need some stable database, which is reliable, correct? That's what you need. So there are so many databases into the market. However, MySQL is the open source, MySQL community version is the open source database, which is most widely used into the market today. And that's why we decided to go with MySQL database for our Spring Data JPA session. But before we will go for a Spring Data JPA, we have to install MySQL database. So that's what we will do in this video. Also guys, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you will get early notification. Also like, share and comment on videos. Okay, so now without further ado, let's start. Before I'll go for installation of MySQL, what I'll do is I'll explain you like uh, what sort of licensing you need in order to use MySQL community version. So basically, if you want to use MySQL community version for your application, then you don't need any licensing. You can use it into your application and generate money. There is no problem. Only the problem is you cannot develop your another database on top of MySQL and then sell that database. This sort of product development is not supported, correct? And if you are doing like that, then obviously you are going to face legal penalties. So there is nothing wrong when you are using MySQL community version into your project and generate money. Nothing wrong in that. Okay, this is about the licensing. So it is an open source which is, uh, you know, like which is open to use. However, it is not like where you can develop your own product on top of MySQL, your own database on top of MySQL database and then sell that database. It's not possible. Okay, so that's how the licensing is. Okay, so now what we will do is we will go for uh, inst installation of MySQL. But before that, we have to download MySQL. So what you have to do is you have to go on Google and then you have to go for mysql.org. So this is the site where you have to go. And as soon as you will go for that, it will redirect it to dev.mysql.com. And from here, you have to go for MySQL downloads. Okay, now here you can see MySQL community server. Now, here you have the packages. So basically these are the GIF file and then you will get uh, the packages, but I need installer. So we'll go to this. Here you can see Windows x86 30. So automatically it detected my uh, OS, uh, what type of my OS is. Here there are different types of OS it supports, MySQL community version. It supports lot many types of OS platform. However, I'm using Microsoft Windows, so I'll go for this. And then we need to download this. Okay, so we will go with this download. And here you have to log in or you can go with just start my download. So I'll go with just start my download. So it will take some time, but uh, to save the time, what I have done, I already downloaded this. So I'll cancel it and I'll go to my downloads directory. Then this installer is already there. I just need to install it. So what I'll do is I'll just install it. So give a double click on that. Go for yes. Okay, so here uh, default is developer default, but what we will do is we will go for custom because we don't need all those sort of things. Yeah, you, you can see over here, MySQL server, MySQL cell, MySQL router, all those things we don't need. MySQL workbench we need, okay. So MySQL connector we don't need. So we'll go with custom, okay. Then go for next. And here we need MySQL server. So we will select this guy, MySQL server. 
and then uh, what we will need other thing is uh, we'll go for application and then we'll go for mysql workbench we need that as well so only two we need only mysql server and mysql workbench then next and here you can see it is uh, uh, so i don't want to install into my c drive i'll go for d drive so this is my pc then i'll go for d then i'll go for installation installation is a directory over here and then there will be a directory called mysql so i'll go with this mysql okay so yeah i will go for this okay and uh, you can create path at the back end and at that time it what it will do is it will give you this uh, warning which is okay otherwise you don't need to create it automatically create at the time of installation go for yes and go for execute you can see the details it won't take much time okay i'll go for next then again next and here you can see development computer so obviously it is a development computer which is okay there are other options like server computer dedicated computer and all so that's okay we'll go with port 3306 the default port only uh, nothing we need to change then go for next and here it is asking for a strong encryption and all so just go for legacy because this will be for development purpose only so go for legacy and then next and here we have to go for a root password so i'll give password okay okay so now i'll go for next and the service name will be mysql 8t which is okay a standard system account it will run as a standard system account which is okay and then we'll go for execute it will take some time and finally it will be done so finally it is done now click on finish next finish okay so mysql database installation is done so once the installation is done then you have to go to the start menu and then you can see here you have mysql workbench and mysql command line client okay you do have uh, unicode also but uh, we'll focus on these two command line client and workbench so what are these that will will understand that we will try to understand now if let's say you are not able to see these things over here then what you can do is you just go to the mysql section if you will go over here then here also you can find mysql workbench is there then mysql command line client is there this one okay so now mysql command line client is something where you will get a command window sort of thing to execute your sql query however mysql workbench is something where you will get gui graphical user to execute your sql query so what we will do is let's go to the command line first and then we will try to understand workbench as well so let's start with command line client okay as soon as you will try to connect through command line client it will try to connect you using root user so you have to give the password of root so i have given password of root now i am able to connect now to clean your command window what you have to use is system cls and make sure to put semicolon at end of each of your sql statement or whatever command you are going to execute that's the best practice there are some command which will not give you error when you will not put semicolon at the end but most of the command needs semicolon at the end so always give even if you are giving semicolon at the end that doesn't harm okay so done now what we will do is we will try to see how many databases are there by default so databases and you can see right now we have information schema mysql performance schema and sys so 
what we will do now is we will try to create a database okay so we are not going to use the default database or a schema which is already there what we will do is for our project we are going to create our own database so the command is create database and let's say spring underscore db okay so database has been created now you can execute all these command on workbench as well so let's connect to the workbench so this is the workbench so as soon as you will connect to the workbench you will get this window so first thing is what you have to do is you have to add mysql connection so you can click over here or you can go to this and connect to database but this connect to database only happen if you have already saved connection so first go to manage connection so what you need to do is first you have to click on new okay so this will be a new connection you can see over here on left hand side now rename it so something like um, mysql root okay so mysql will be the database name and root will be the user okay so this will be the host name this will be the port and username will be root store and password we will store in the vault so okay now the schema name is mysql so if you will see over command window then you can find mysql database we will try to connect okay so test the connection and you can see successful then what we will do is we'll just close it okay so now if you will go to connect to database then you can find mysql root is there correct so we'll go with this and we are able to connect so now whatever command we have executed on mysql client command window same we are going to execute over here as well so so data bases and we have to select the complete line and then execute this this is the symbol for execute and execute so you can see now we have all the database so spring underscore db is the new one which we have created let's create one more database so we'll go with create data base database and uh, spring data okay so again we have to select this then we have to execute and now if you will go with this so database so you can see you have a spring db and a spring data as well so we are good with showing the database we are good with creation of the database now we have to create a user okay so basically we will not use root user to connect to this database like a spring data or a spring db so let's create a user and we'll give proper privilege to that user so one way is you can go for mysql client but creation of user from gui is very easy so why not create user from gui okay so same thing you can do it from mysql client command window also but you sometimes what happens like based upon mysql version and all you will get issues when granting permission to the user so better to go with this option so what you have to do is if you will go to the left panel then you have option like schemas and administration so you have to click on administration then go for users and privilege click on there now what you can do is you have to create a account so you will go with add account and here you have to go for a spring underscore admin that's the username and authentication type a standard that is username and the password limit to host matching this is percentage so from any host this user can connect to this database and password will be keep something which is easy to remember okay okay and then we have to go for next tab that is account limit keep 
all these things default next go for administrative roles so here what we will do is let's create this user as a super admin so select all okay and then we'll go for schema privilege so keep it as default no change at all and then apply done so spring admin got created now what we will do is by using this spring admin we will try to connect to our database spring underscore db so what again we have to do is we have to go for manage connection here we have to create a new connection and rename it something like spring underscore db and with spring admin so spring db is the database and spring admin is the user so this will be host name this will be the port user will be a spring admin and password will be whatever you kept and then default schema will be a spring underscore db okay test the connection and it is successful good now close it so now go to connect to database and from here you can select which one you want to connect so i want to connect with spring db with spring admin so go with that and you are all set okay so working on gui is uh, very easy however you can do all these things on mysql client as well so we gone through how to show the database how to create a database how to create a user now let's say you want to connect to database from your spring application then what what are the details that you need so obviously you need host detail which will be a local host in this case if it runs on some other host then you have to give the ip or domain name port will be 3306 at the time of installation we gone through the default port user this is the user we have created a spring admin password whatever the password we kept for a spring admin and the db name db name schema name or service name whatever data schema you want to connect that's what you have to give so spring db we created a spring underscore data as well we uh, we have mysql by default as well so whatever database you want to connect you just have to give the name okay so this is all about some of the basic command that you need on mysql so in order to start your spring data jpa you need to have your installation ready so you need to have your mysql database onto your machine i'm not saying only mysql you can use any database but whatever i'm going to cover in my spring data jpa session i'll cover through mysql database only which is most widely used today into the market so first thing is you have to be done with your installation then second thing is you have to create a, a specific database for your project then you have to create a user to connect to your database done these are the things that you have to do also if you want to do some administrative jobs like you want to delete the database you want to delete the user all those things you google it there are a lot many resources available how to do all this but the agenda of this video is to walk you through installation steps of mysql as well some of the very basic command of mysql like uh, how to show the database how to create a database and all okay so guys once again thanks a lot for connecting me today i am really very happy because i have completed one of the prerequisite for a spring data jpa that is installation of mysql so we are ready to go for a spring data jpa so i will connect you guys in my next video where we will talk about spring data jpa till then take care stay healthy stay safe thank you